The Air Umbrella was a failed Kickstarter from 2012 showing a prototype that appeared to work. I have to admit, their video looks very compelling. But two fellow YouTubers have since attempted building their own, determining even leaf blowers don't have enough power. But does that mean the Kickstarter video was faked? I want to find out what a real Air Umbrella looks like, or if this Kickstarter was a scam from the start. The first step is verifying if a leaf blower in a single direction is enough to deflect the rain. Unfortunately, we have clear skies at the moment in Western Oregon, but that never lasts more than an hour. High-speed footage reveals some startling truths about the rain. First, raindrops come in a variety of sizes. Second, if a drop doesn't nail the jet of air, it's unaffected. Third, if it does hit the jet, it's gone. Since the theory appears sound, my son is making an adapter in CAD we can 3D print to confirm fit before trying a bunch of different geometries. Look at that, a perfect fit the first time. Running a little math, I conclude that a six inch circle doesn't need a very big gap to equal the area of a leaf blower nozzle. So now we're making what's basically a giant bell. But the first test in the rain is pretty disappointing. Not knowing if a narrower or wider slot is better, I print both and give them a try. The larger slot definitely feels like more air, but it still isn't doing the job. All right, something else. Then in the middle of summer, it looks like a rainstorm is going to hit during a trailer camping trip we planned for months with friends. So I printed a whole bunch of different nozzles to bring along and show off. But to my disappointment, none of them worked. As a last ditch effort, I tried packing paper towels in the largest nozzle to block all but one direction and it seems to help. More power! Boost it! Not only that, I learned a couple things about redirecting raindrops. Just look at how effective the fast-moving air is at redirecting these heavy streams of water. How can that be when tiny raindrops still make it through? Terminal velocity refers to the maximum speed of a falling object when the drag force through the air or other medium equals the force of gravity. Ah. Since the forces are canceled out to zero, the formula F equals MA tells us the acceleration is now zero as well. But that doesn't mean the object stops falling, just that it stops speeding up. It will continue to fall at constant velocity until the balance of forces changes. A quick search reveals it takes anywhere from one to three meters for raindrops to reach terminal velocity depending on their mass. To test this, I'm setting up my own water fixture similar to what the Air Umbrella folks must have used in their video. Sure enough, when I'm close to the water source where the velocity is lowest, my Air Umbrella works great. But when I lower it down about a meter, you have to be right next to the tube to avoid getting wet. Next to the original Air Umbrella video, it's obvious their water source is just out of frame. But did they realize this, or was it a simple mistake? Something else looks fishy to me, so I want to try another experiment. I'm connecting my air compressor to a brass T to see what it does to the simulated rain. Not surprisingly, it's pretty effective at repelling the water. But now compare the original Air Umbrella footage to my leaf blower and air compressor. Do you see what I see? The atomization of the water from my air compressor matches the original footage. To me, it looks like the jets of air are coming from behind the device. I'm calling this a total scam, but I still want to try building one that actually works. Since the best performance has come from a directed jet of air, I'm designing a smooth elbow that will send all the leaf blower power directly over the top of my head, giving me the best chance of staying dry. And what do you know? It actually seems to be working. Yeah, I'm getting wet on my side, but not where this thing is aiming right over me. Okay, not bad. 
but nobody wants to walk around with a leaf blower in front of their face. So I'm repurposing an old backpack to mount the leaf blower to with controls that extend out the front. But to make that work, I've got to tap into the electronics inside. Normally I can just look up the specs for a switch, but nothing's available for this one online. So I'm having to back probe the throttle switch to figure out how it sends signals to the motor controller. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it works! <laughs> Woo! All right, now we can trigger it. I've never used a USB-C cable for a project, but once I figured out how to do it, it worked pretty slick. Middle one is regular speed. Turbo it. <laughs> turbo mode is really turbo. Put that thing on wheels or something. <laughs> yeah, I would make it move with just the normal. <laughs> But to make sure we get complete protection from the rain, I'm mounting twin blowers to the backpack. Yeah, it's probably overkill, but I want to be certain it can't fail. All I need now are some test subjects to try it on. Here we go. Let's do one at a time, because it's got a little thrust to it. There you go. Now, go ahead and kick on the middle switch of the other one. Both, both running. So kick on the second one if you should. Go ahead and boost them both. <laughs> well, I don't see any rain landing on your started this project, I wasn't sure what it would take to repel the rain. I had to learn by doing, basically engage with the problem until I figured it out. It was a lot like Brilliant, this online learning platform where you also learn by doing. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Lecture videos are great, but if you're going to devote time to learning, why not use a method that's proven to be six times more effective? Brilliant's lessons are filled with hands-on problem solving, letting you play with concept. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Spending a little time learning each day does wonders for personal and professional growth. Instead of mindlessly scrolling on social media, build a habit of feeding your brain with lessons that are fun and engaging. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Quint Builds or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for considering Brilliant. Now, in case you're wondering, of course I knew that the outcome of this video was not going to be some practical replacement for the daily use of an umbrella. 
I just wanted to see if by throwing my fabrication skills at this problem, if I could come up with a unique solution that actually worked, and of course make an even more thorough debunking of the air umbrella concept. And of course, I thought this was gonna be a lot easier. I did not envision this pseudo dual jetpack thing ending up being the solution. But I learned a lot and it was fun to do. And as usual, if you care about the nitty gritty of how I wired up and using USB-C cables for this little project of mine, check out my smaller channel, Build2, and I'll go into all those little details for the people that want to see it. But regardless, please like, subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video.